So, um, good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, so I'm um, welcoming you on to this our second gathering actually. And this time around we are about to interview Mr. Usman Sanibello. So good morning. Good morning, Tosin. Yeah, so um, I would like all of us to introduce ourselves and see what we do shortly. So I'm gonna work this like every day. I work with Nigeria for FM as a research assistant and also I've interviewed a quite a number of persons and I could say I started off with the group head of Heritage Bank, the group head of e-banking in Heritage Bank. I've interviewed the former vice chancellor of Kenya University, the deputy vice chancellor of management of the University of Lagos, some commissioners and lots more. And also, in the last two months, we interviewed uh, Professor Pat Stone and now we're interviewing you. So, that's a good profile about me. So. Okay. I'm Odinin Chile from Akama. I'm an undergraduate. I'm also a broadcaster with Nigeria and Welfare by Time for Free. I present on radio and on Mazovia TV as well. I'm also a voiceover artist and a producer, an audio producer to be specific, an events compare. And I'm a Jesus girl. A happy chat. <laughs> that's me. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, my name is um, Samu Shubambi. I'm currently a student of the University of Lagos in my third year, studying Buddha in the Faculty of Science. And I'm also a photographer. And generally, anything about me just smiling and being happy. A big child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, that's it really. And um, so the next <coughs> thing is we'd like to give a brief introduction about you, like giving a brief profile about you. So I'll start off and then she continues. Yeah, so Mr. Usman Salibel was born on the 11th of October 1972 in Lagos, Ikeja, to Kunel Sanibelo retired and Aji Arabi to Sanibelo, and is the third son out of 11 children. As a child of a seven military officer, he attended various primary schools in different cities, depending on where his father was transferred to work. He graduated from a command secondary school in Kontagora, Niger State, and he proceeded to federal government school as a Rebauchi State for a year. <laughs> Receiving <button. laughs> He moved to Harare in Zimbabwe in the 1980s when his father was appointed to be the Nigerian High Commissioner to the Zimbabwean government. He got his Cambridge certific certified O level, I beg your pardon. He got his Cambridge certified O level certificate from St. George's College in Zimbabwe. Then he got his SSE certificate from Hilltop Model School in Mina, in Niger State. He gained admission to study medicine in Amadou Bello University, Zaria, in 1992. However, he moved to the United Kingdom in 1997, the year I was born, to study geology and environmental issues from Brunel University, Oxbridge. Also, he bagged an MBA with a concentration in marketing from Huron University, which is now called Holt University. He has worked at the head office of Afrin PLC, which is an oil exploration and production company, as a project coordinator and also as an assistant to the asset manager in an oil field developed offshore in Nigeria. He later worked as the regulatory compliance officer and government relation officer in the Nigerian office of Afrin PLC. He's the co-founder and director of Coastland Energy Logistic Limited, which is an offshore vessel logistic company. He's currently the president of Mustafa Comprehensive School in Kontagara, Kontagara, I beg your pardon, I'm going to murder it, in Kontagara, Niger State. He's also the vice chairman of the Sani Bello Foundation. He's the co-founder and director of Lopra Restaurant in London and the co-founder and director of Alan Cafe Chains in London. Lady and gentlemen, let's put our hands together. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah. So, um, up next, is you would like to hear you speak on the topic and the revitalization of educational development, uh, developmental and governance policies in Nigeria. Yeah, it's just going to be a brief one. We want to hear your take on this topic. Well, first of all, may I uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity of yeah. voice to actually say whatever it is that I've been bottling up in my, in my stomach. Um, being a Nigerian, I've passed through, I've gone through. Um, quite a lot of experience you know, when you talk about education and I am a victim and hence I do identify um, the pain that our young um, 
young students or young university, especially what at, at the university level, what they are going through. Education, or rather the development of education in Nigeria, I must say, is at a comatose, disgraceful state. For some strange, bizarre reason, we are all guilty. And when I say we, I mean all of us. We are all guilty. How on earth? Why or how do we allow this to come to this um, state? How do we end up finding ourselves in this disgraceful state whereby students just go to university and just for the sake of going to school really without actually learning and implementing whatever it is <coughs> they've learned you know, um, during the university years to make a change in, 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 in our society? Obviously, this decay it didn't happen overnight. It was a gradual. It was a It was a gradual um, um, uh, uh, event. But you know, um, I believe the government really needs to do more. The government needs to wake up. The government needs to put in as much money as possible. And I don't want to hear any excuses of there is no money. Wherever the money is, must funds. Funds must be pumped into all our tertiary institutions, down to our secondary schools, and obviously to our primary schools, so that we can actually produce graduates that will be of use to change the society, to make Nigeria move to the next level, if I may say, and make Nigeria work again. So these are the kind of places, the kind of um, issues that um, we are currently experiencing in Nigeria when it comes to our education system. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so um, one of the other parts of the topic is developmental and governance policies in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do we revitalize them? Gosh, um, you know, it's it's one of those things that we try as much as possible. Obviously, there are also some set goals um, in terms of the SDG uh, set goals that, of course, the government needs to get its act together and obviously um, <coughs> make a change within a very short time. I think we need to desperately, first of all, find the right people in place to analyze the situation on the ground. And then once that is done, the idea of funding. Without funding, you cannot do anything. Without the right people in the right place, all the right offices, you, are, you, you will not go anywhere. So the bottom line is really, at the end of the day, is the commitment of the government pumping in money through the right channel to provide the right um, uh, platform so that um, our, our, our education system can perhaps flourish and, 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 and bloom in the near future. It's not going to be an overnight thing because obviously um, it took years, probably <coughs> 20, 25, maybe 30 years for the complete, um, complete uh, what do you call it, deterioration of our, of our, of our educational system. But um, it's one of those things that obviously the government has no choice. It, there is no choice here. The government has no choice because any nation without a proper uh, platform for providing a good um, education for the young is a failed um, nation, really. So that's just how it is, really. We just have to uh, face reality and then work uh, uh, twice as hard and, and, of course, if possible, help the government. But the government has to be there. The, the key player has to play a pivotal role in this um, crisis that is upon us. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Osman. So, we've actually had him give us a short speech on the topic which we coined as the revitalization of educational, developmental, and governance policies in Nigeria. So, now, what are you going straight to the interview? Yesterday was actually a pre interview, as you said. Okay. Yeah, so. I'll begin by asking you a few questions. Um, while I was speaking with you, I heard you say that you're very, very passionate about our uh, educational sector and also our health sector, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, so now um, education, which we all agree as the soul of it. However, it is obvious that our educational system is, is deteriorating at a rapid pace. Yeah. That's right. So, I would like to know, 
who would you think this country could actually sandwich educational problems? Well, you know, if you, I am 14 years plus, I remember, I obviously, from my, from my, my, from my primary school, I was in Pantagora, graduated from uh, Army Children's School, Pantagora, you know, there wasn't anything like, like private school. It wasn't really anything like private school then, to be honest. I'm sure maybe in Lagos, yes, but, but there were certainly. Uh, went to, uh, like I said, Army Children's School. And it was, it was an incredible setup, whereby the son of a retired colonel was sitting next to the son of a, a lower rank um, officer or soldier. You know, we had a good, good foundation because we had incredible good teachers. You know, um, as the years went by, and going through the guts of uh, what you call it, the, the, the digestive system of the Nigerian uh, education system, at least to, up to the part I went to um, FGC Azari, you know, we still had incredible teachers, good teachers, you know, system did work. Uh, I wouldn't say, I don't, want, I, I don't know whether it's fortunate or unfortunate, I left and I, and I, and I moved to Zimbabwe. Um, that was when my father became the Nigerian High Commissioner to, uh, to, to Zimbabwe and I went to a very good school, very good school, uh, very um, Etonian kind of setup, you know, going just to such a school you'll find out it's not just going <coughs> for lectures or classes and learning A, B, C, D and 1, 2, 3. It is a complete way of life in the sense that it teaches you how to interact for the rest of your life and you can actually fit in wherever you go. Now that is also another part of education that is lacking in Nigeria. So I can, I, I, I can still compare and contrast uh, how we were taught in, say, for example, FGC Azari, despite the fact it was actually a good school, and what I went through in terms of education in St. George's College, completely different. Nigeria has a very masculine, aggressive form of educating the young. Uh, we believe in everything has to be aggressive. And we believe in learn it, cram it, pass, and that's the end of it. While in Zimbabwe, what I learned is, was uh, appreciate what you're being taught in a very, I wouldn't say feminine, in a very, not motherly, in a very, um, not, maybe should I use the word soft way, and you're made to understand and implement whatever it is that you will learn in class. I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, one of the things that I absolutely loved about going to St. George's College, and I'm sure maybe I'm sure it's the same as most of the schools in, in, in Harare then, is every student is given some sort of a jata. And in class, you are not really allowed, you can, you could if you so wish, but you're not really allowed to to take your notes while the lecturer is actually speaking on your, on your <coughs> what do you call it, you have to write it in your jotter. And when you write it in your jotter in the evening during prep, you transfer whatever it is that you learn, you, you copy it you know, in class, and you transfer it to your textbook, and you make it neater. And you know, you, you, you try as much as possible to make your, 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 your exercise book rather, um, your exercise book as, as neat as possible, you underline, you use all the colors, you know, and you, it's also a competition really, and sometimes when you go through some of these textbooks, some of these um, exercise books, you know, it's incredible. And the idea stuck in your head. You know, another thing that I, I, I remember playing comparison to Nigeria is um, how my biology teacher, when she would perform mock exams, she said the key to having or rather passing your exam is when you are actually when you're actually answering your, your questions for your final year exam, mm -hmm. make sure you're doing it in such a way as if the 
lecturer or the invigilator or the person, sorry, invigilator, the person marking your script has never gone through school. So make him understand. And I think I used that, and I, that really helped me, really, up to now I still use the same thing. So I tried to explain things in detail, and sometimes in too much detail. And um, it just makes more sense that way. You know, but then I left, I left, I left Harari, Zimbabwe, uh, barely 15, or just a little over 15 years old, and I didn't have pure chemistry and pure biology. I had it as a combined science, even though I had pure, uh, pure biology. So of course, and I wanted to read medicine. So I had to come back to Nigeria to do SSCE, mm -hmm. went to Hilltop, set up by uh, David Mark, actually. It was a kind of a model school under the government house of Niger State then. And a very good school, incredibly good school. I, I, I cannot emphasize how good, I mean, that, that school is incredible. You know, um, I was there and I my, in my SCE, um, obviously, did obviously jam and got my first choice, went to AB University into medicine. Now, I still remember this. My ID card says U nine one ten ninety two. In other words, we start in ninety ten ninety three, so we start in ninety one, but really ninety two because of the session. And my graduation <laughs> was supposed to be nineteen ninety seven. So from ninety two to ninety or ninety one to ninety seven, or whatever you want to look at it, you know, you get the, the years that you need to graduate. Well, this is the 1990s, early 1990s, and by 1997, I think more than half of the class were stuck in our third year. So we lost roughly three, maybe three and a half years to um, strikes. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's funny. We actually, I remember, I remember the first, the, after, after our, first of all, to register then, things have changed I'm sure right now, to register then it takes you perhaps the whole semester, sometimes the whole year, to actually complete your registration. I remember we've done part of our registration and um, this was in 1992 and around April, strike. So we were barely in school for three months because we started from I think, January to February and we were barely in school for, for three months and then there was a one month strike. That was the beginning. A lot of clever ones left Nigeria, moved to the UK, and we kept on hanging on saying things are going to get better. It will get better. And I remember there was a time, you know, um, there was a strike for one year, three months, and then we came back and the Faculty of Medicine went into a one month strike. So we lost a lot. And painfully, you know, I remember the last time I was actually in the anatomy class, um, the Kadaiba room, I, so it was a strike then as well. Yeah. This was in 97. I was in the cadaver room. And I said to myself, if I'm going to be a doctor, I might as well be a very good doctor. And if I'm going to be a very good doctor, will I be a good doctor with this situation whereby we spend more time at home than in school? And I walked out of the cadaver room. And I never looked back and I said, I'm moving to the UK. Moving to the UK and I'll study physiology or anatomy or biochemistry. These are the courses, especially physiology. I really, what do you call it? Uh, I really love physiology. On the way to the UK in 1997, sometime in June or July, to seek for admission, you know, I was half asleep. You know, when you feel, oh, I've lost everything. Um, and um, there was a movie. I think it was Volcano or Earthquake. One of those strange movies, Hollywood movies. That it seems to be. It seems to be seems to be very much correlated to some sort of or mimic the idea of, of, of natural disasters. And some one in the movie says, where are the geologists? We need the geologists here. Where are the geologists? And I opened my eyes like, hmm, geology? And I said, wait a minute. Is it this strange? All my life, from a very, very young age, I've always been collecting stones and keeping stones. I'm very interested in all sorts of 